I used to work at a car wash. I made $30 a day from eight in the morning to eight at night. So they basically let you know you gotta live off your tips. So you gotta really go hard. And so I used to let them know I'd do anything for you. I wash the car, if you leave me $20, I'll fill your tank up. If you left me with enough time, I'll put your cassettes in alphabetical order. I think that may be the small difference between the, the ones who really go get it and the ones who just talking. You get one life. And out that one life, you're, you're only gonna get out of it what you put into it. And never being okay with where you are, yeah. because after every level is another level, whether you realize it or not. And I always wanted to see what was past the thing that I got. Yeah. I got here, but what was back there? Yeah. I was never content with being here. Don't post everything you think. Don't, just don't. If you're watching this right now, Anybody, if anybody is watching this, don't post your feelings. Don't do it to yourself. Even if I do a good job, I always wonder, you know, how I could have done it better. I rarely celebrate anything. And um, just for anyone watching this that's wondering how this happened, you know, that's really the answer. It's, um, it's being so unsure how you're getting it done that you just, you just kind of keep going in the hopes of figuring out the formula. Um, feeling so lucky and blessed that the fear of losing it keeps you up at night can another man say you're fired absolutely no one can tell me that and I, that's what i that's priceless but i'm here because i, I don't enjoy. care you enjoy I having enjoy a man be able to you but you, but, but you, you enjoy, enjoy, okay let me ask you a question so you being selfish do you think your son enjoys you calling somebody else a boss don't you think your son would rather wake up with you and you could pick him up from school instead of having to do a nine to five? Don't you think, day. yeah, all right, but don't, you have to wake up, day. it's four in the morning. Don't you think your son would love if his name was up there? Dash, or whatever your last name is instead of somebody else's? It's my Casey pride is in my children. If that's not what you hustling for, you're selfish. Well, you keep saying I, I'm worried about my kids. You worried about you. As soon as the car left the driveway of the school, I said, I'm moving to New York and I'm gonna be an actor. And my mom paused for probably a half a second and she said, great, go do it. The only thing I ask you is in two and a half or three years, if you don't have any sense that this is going to happen, you have to make me one promise. And I said, what? And she said, you got to pull yourself out because as your mother, you can't ask me to uh, tell you to give up on your dreams. And I said, that's so profound and yes, fair. Cut to two and a half years later, I was like, um, so I'm out. This is terrible. It's so scary. And she said, you know, it's September. Just wait it out. Just wait till the end of the year. Don't give up just yet. I was ready to, I was telling her to come get me. And three weeks later, I got the office. It is a sure sign that you're going to end up in a great place when you give great detail to little things. Excellence doesn't start when the lights come on. Excellence doesn't start when the crowd gathers. Excellence doesn't come when everybody's watching. Excellence is nurtured in mediocrity. If you cannot manage the little things, you'll never be able to manage the big things. If the little things overwhelm you, if you complain and collapse about little things, you'll never be ready for the greater things that God is about to do in your life. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. You can tell them bad news. And they'll listen. They won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and, you know, derail the whole conversation. You can actually tell them bad news and they'll listen. This is a weirder thing. You can tell them good news and they'll help you celebrate. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. I'm gonna ask you one question, I'm gonna go. How many of you in here know somebody who loves to sleep? Let me ask you something, AJ Poe. High performance people fly like eagles. Eagles fly alone. Zuckerberg has no mates. Elon Musk has no mates. Steve Jobs had no mates. Bill Gates has no mates, and I can go on and on and on and on. They don't hang, they don't chill, they don't go to the Super Bowl, they don't go to the World Cup, they don't go to Wimbledon. All they do is work. I fall into that category. You got 24 hours in a day, eight hours you sleep, and most people work a nine to five. So eight hours you're working. Okay, so we have 16 hours, you got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we had, we'll be at night, there's 19. Take your hour to get ready. So we had 20 hours. So you guys cannot spend four hours going to about, oh, 
They lying. Oh, I like this photo. Oh, they faking. Sending photos to other people. Y'all got to get focused. I'm where I'm at because I'm focused. Tunnel vision. I'm focused on what I got to do. Y'all got to have a game plan. If you didn't make it in your 20s, you can make it in your 30s. And if you didn't make it in your 30s, you can make it in your 40s. And if you didn't make it in your 40s, you can make it in your 50s. And just remember Grandma Moses. She was a painter. And she didn't start painting until, I think, in her 80s. And one of the most prolific painters. It's never too late. Never too late. Never so too have late. fun. That's what it's all about. You don't trust that someone's never going to betray you. You just trust that you'll be able to handle it if they do. That you'll be able to walk away. That's a massive key to it. Stop worrying about whether you can trust someone else. Maybe you can't. We don't know that. Only time will tell if you can trust somebody else. That is a pointless waste of your energy to worry about. Worry only about yourself. Losses are part of life. I've lost in kickboxing. I've lost in boxing. I've lost in life. I've lost in love. I've lost in family. Like, life is, you know, you don't just win all the time. It's wins and losses. So you just... You roll with the punches, pun. Life is short and it's fragile. And we don't know how many birthdays we have. So just, we don't want to have a birthday to celebrate. Just celebrate life. And if you haven't told someone you love them, do it now. Do it, tell people you love them. Call your friends, text your friends, hug them, kiss them. You see, if you never heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on people who never cut you. I gotta be honest with you, when it comes to relationship pain and when it comes to heartbreak, it's a drive-through only matter. You can't go around it, you can't avoid it. The only way to get over it is to actually face it and drive through it. I'm dead, I'm in heaven, you're God. I imagine it was a big long line and you got judgment. David, congratulations, you made it to heaven, how you feel? And right now I'm 300 pound man. You pull the paper down, it says David Goggins. I'm reading it. And it has my name, but on this paper, it says everything about you. Everything, because God knows all. 185 pounds, Navy SEAL, changed people's lives. All these amazing things. I look at God and say, God, you, the name is right, but what's on here is not me. He goes, it should have been you. This was the life that you were supposed to live, but you didn't try. So this is the life that you have. I'm alone and look at me. There's nobody around me. Nobody likes me, man. It is what it is. Sometimes in life, people are not going to be around you to motivate you. They're not going to be around you to push you, to celebrate you, to applause you. You got to do it on your own. That's what I'm doing right now. One thing I learned in life, you can never bring somebody up if they don't want to go up. You can't. No matter how good you think you are, no matter how much you want to tell them, you can help them. If they don't want to go up, there's nothing you can do. 100%. But the reverse is not true. Somebody bad could bring a good person down. Because the negativity in the world is much, much stronger than the positive sometimes. And the negative people can bring you down. So I stay away from negative people. You're right. I just walk away from them. I want you guys to be all I want you to be all in. That's what Coach Swinney said. Yes, sir. And the only disability in your life is your bad attitude. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, I actually paid attention one time in class. And, and he said, he had this beautiful quote, and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now. I have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. The fact that I'm gonna die one day, yeah. and that everyone around me is gonna die, and no one will remember me after a certain point, makes me feel so good. Like, cause I could do the best thing in the world, and nobody would remember it ever, and I'll die, and it won't matter, and everyone else around me will die, and it won't matter. Or I could do the worst thing in the world, and that won't matter, because I'll die eventually, so. You don't really have to worry that much. First we shine the shoes, then we own the shoe shops. First we make the sandwiches, then we own the restaurants. First we clean the houses, then we own every house on the block. And then we believe in ourselves, we work hard, we take full advantage of the American dream and the opportunity. And then we end up with a Hollywood star on the block in Los Angeles. Play with it. Eat up. We work hard for it, we don't work hard for it. When me and my brother, we work hard for our stuff. 
It'll all come easy in life you have to work. Either you have to be the shark of the ocean or the fish of the ocean. And right now we have to be that shark. Take over everything. Strength, no weakness. Power, the muscle. Have to have that mindset. So you're gonna come in here and dominate. A lot of people would look at someone um, in my position right now and think, uh, She's really got her shit together, you know? Like, she's really on it. Like, she's got it all. And um, as far as like my personal life goes, I really have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. And um, I just want to say that um, if you're someone out there who has no idea what this next chapter is going to bring, you're not alone in that. God didn't promise us a, a problem-free life. We ain't never going to have that. You're never going to experience life to and, and feel like, you know what, everything is good all the time. But there has to be something inside of you, even right now today, that decides you're gonna win no matter what. No matter what comes at you, no matter what was already said about you, no matter if you don't have your parents, no matter if you don't have family, you have to know and decide today, right now, that you are gonna be one of the ones in this room that wins. The reason why grandmama's cooking was so good, cause she didn't cook, Sunday dinner, Sunday evening, she started Saturday night. She let it marinate overnight, that's why it was so good. The reason why your gift is not like all these other gifts that are so microwavable, is because God's put something in you that is too great. And you gotta know that what's inside of you is so great that, that it's taking a little bit longer because God did not call you to be microwavable. Einstein said that if you cannot tell your goal to a six-year-old child, and have the six-year-old child explain it to another six-year-old child and both of them understand it, then you don't know what your goal is yourself. So ask yourself, is your goal so clear that you could tell it to a six-year-old child and the six-year-old child would not only understand what the goal, but could tell you how close you are to it. I didn't have an easy experience. I didn't have come in as a top-rated recruit. I didn't come in with the opportunity to play right away. I had to earn it. And you know what the greatest honor I've ever received as a player is? In my fourth year, in my fifth year, I was named team captain. That, to this day, is the single greatest achievement I've ever had as a football player. Because the men in this room chose me to lead their team. When you seek revenge, you destroy yourself. And that's the paradoxical conflict that we all live in. Someone has mistreated us. We want revenge, but if we take it, we hurt ourselves more. The only answer is loving kindness. And most of us don't want to hear that. It's like, I'll take my chances with revenge. When I was born, the doctors told my parents that I would be dead within the first 24 hours of my life. 35 years later, all those doctors are dead, and I am the only doctor that remains. <laughs> Never believe a prediction that doesn't empower you. Only the disciplined ones are free in life. If you are in discipline, you are a slave to your moods. You are a slave to your passions. The best time to plant a tree was 25 years ago. The second and the best time is today. No matter what you've done, yeah. you have the right to be forgiven. I don't let nobody hold me to the mistakes I made. Mm. Look, man, once God forgive me, I'm through with you. Mm. You can feel how you want to feel about mm. me, but you can't drive your car looking in the rearview mirror. See, mm -hmm. you got to get your eyes off the past and look at where you're going. If you want me to be, I was a garbage man. I worked the back of the truck, 22 square blocks. That's hard. Doing movies, is, there's nothing that we do in the movies. That's what I was, hard. I used to deliver for United Parcel Service yeah. on the truck. Right. That was hard. Yeah, yeah. This is a joke. Last but not least, I want to thank me. I want to thank me for believing in me. I want to thank me for doing all this hard work. I want to thank me for having no days off. I want to thank me for, for never quitting. I want to thank me for always being a giver and trying to give more than I receive. I want to thank me for trying to do more right than wrong. I want to thank me for just being me at all times. Snoop Dogg, you a bad Where you are now is just a reflection of your past thoughts, your past thinking. So if you want to change your future, you got to change your thoughts now and then put them into action ultimately.
You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things, number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. Winning's not loyal to you. It doesn't care about you. Winning doesn't care how sore you are. Winning doesn't care how much sleep you get. Winning doesn't care how hard you work at times. And sometimes a guy doesn't outwork you and he still wins. It isn't fair, man. Sometimes there is no justice. Winning requires all of you and then more, and it promises you nothing. It's a mastermind of creating fear and doubt in your mind. It causes setback after setback. So the question is about winning. Are you willing to sprint when the distance is unknown? There will be times when you seemingly face insurmountable obstacles, but that's when you dig deep into your soul for the courage and the fortitude to keep going and to never, to never forget that despite life's detours, you are destined for greatness. Make sure that you are talking to yourself in a way that is loving and supportive. It became clear to me at a certain point in my life, I realized that when I am in crisis, when I have quote unquote fucked up, my response is, you fucking idiot. Of course, what did you expect? If I spoke to my friends like I used to speak to myself, I would have no friends. If you do talk to yourself out loud, and I do, make sure that the words are loving and supportive and nourishing. Start the work of being your own best friend. My name is Kobe Bryant, I'm 17 years old. I wasn't invited to parties or you know friendly, friendly gatherings on the weekend. So on Fridays and Saturdays, I would go into my rec room with my basketball and basically dribble myself to sleep. I think that that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because of doing those lonely hours in the rec room, I discovered the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. It's a great feeling to know that you set a goal for yourself, and you were able to reach that goal and to knock it down. Oh, relationships are tough. No, they're not. They're only tough when one person's working on it. That's right. Two people can move a couch real easy. One person can't move it at all. Stop competing. It's not a f***ing competition. Her success is your success, and your success is her success. There is no equality in a relationship. You're both there to serve. You are in the service industry, okay? My, my number one message to entrepreneurs, and I teach today, is never pursue entrepreneurship for the greed of money. It has nothing to do with it at all. The whole reason to be an entrepreneur is the pursuit of freedom. That's why you do it. You do it because you want to be free one day to do whatever you like. I'm here because I want to be here. I don't have to be here. I don't even have to ever, ever listen to a phone call again if I don't want to. That's not what I want to do. I, I enjoy spending my time doing the things that I want to do. There's no losing, only learning. There's no failure, only opportunities. And there's no problems, only solutions. So to me what failure is, failure is the mother of all success. If it wasn't for Michael Jordan getting cut from his ninth grade basketball team, he wouldn't have became Michael Jordan. <laughs> you got people like Walt Disney who got fired, if I'm not mistaken, from a newspaper saying he had no imagination. You know that, that all they can do is learn and come back bigger, better, stronger, because all it's going to do is lead you in the right direction. See, if you're always winning, then you don't really understand what it is to win. This is the gap when we start. This is the gap as you grow. Notice how you grow and they don't. So how do you close the gap? You got to come back down. When you come back down, you lose. So you got to keep going up. That's why closing that gap got to be them catching up to you. And if they don't catch up, you got to leave them behind. Because you get to the point now where you got to start cutting out. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you can't look back when you cut them out. Because if they meant to be there, they're going to be there. You can love someone and still choose to say goodbye to them. You can miss a person every day and still be glad that they're no longer in your life. Question for yourself. What is impossible? Never accept the limitations of someone else. Somebody told you that it's impossible. Don't even try. Give up before you even fucking try it for yourself. Never accept the goddamn limitations that someone else has placed upon you. Decide for your 
fucking self. What is your limitation? Try it, you son of a bitch. Try it for your fucking self. Then that is the only way, the only fucking way to know if you can or can't do something. Steve Jobs said, when you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way that it is. And that your life is to live your life inside the world and try not to get in too much trouble and maybe get an education and get a job and make some money and have a family. But life can be a lot broader than that when you realize one simple thing. And that is that everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. I gave the sport of boxing my whole life. I dedicated my whole life to the sport of boxing. All I ever wanted to do was put my family, my mother, my father in a comfortable position. My dad is a millionaire. My mother, she's a millionaire. The investments were, were for my grandchildren, not just my children. Yeah. You know, put them in a position. That's really what it's about. Yeah. Giving back. Your lack of commitment is almost an insult to the people who believe in you. And that's what I'm trying to tell myself. I said, there's people, in, there's people who believe in me. So this is what I'm telling myself right now, today. There's people that believe in me and, and me having this half commitment. It's not what the f I am. It's that's not right. what my people, it's not what that's the right. people who, who believe in me deserve. And I want to, you know, I want to I wanna give back to the people who believe in me and, and give them that belief, you know, and, and prove that belief correct, so. Our nose is located right above our mouth. Suppose you don't brush your teeth for three days. Though this nose is right here, it won't tell you you have not brushed your teeth. The whole room will know you have not brushed your teeth, but you will not know. This is the human predicament. It's very easy to see what's wrong with this guy, what's wrong with her, what's wrong with her. It's very… it takes a lot of observation to see what's wrong with this. That level of keenness of observation is missing in most people. I know that I'm example, I know hundred percent in the pitch and outside the pitch. So, I'm always smile, I'm happy man, I'm blessed that I play in a fantastic club, I have a fantastic family, I have four kids, I'm healthy, I have everything. So, the rest, it doesn't interfere on me, so I'm very, very glad. Life's not easy. Life is not easy. It is not. Don't try to make it that way. Life's not fair. It never was. It isn't now and it won't ever be. Do not fall into the trap, the entitlement trap, of feeling like you're a victim. You are not. Get over it and get on with it. And yes, most things are more rewarding when you break a sweat to get them. I fear living a life where I could have accomplished something and didn't. That's what I fear. I, I don't fear death. You don't fear the unknown. I love the unknown. I love the You know what I want on my tombstone? On my tombstone, a quote from Horace Mann, a great educator. Be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. It's great if somebody has an amazing education, but I know from my own experience and my own life and, and, and other people that I, I work with that you don't have to have a degree to have value or to, you know, be of tremendous worth to different businesses, that street smarts, that experience, uh, that just kind of internal, kind of creative know-how uh, is just as valuable as a degree. Following your dreams is a lonely, solitary, scary, dangerous pursuit. You can't wait for somebody to think you can do it. And you got to be willing to risk everything to become that seed of what you believe you be is in there. You got to be, be fearless. fearless. You got to be relentless. Behind every moment of adversity, there's a lesson and a blessing. You just got to hang in there to see what it is. How many of y'all had some days and you ain't think you was going to make it? Now, you want to know something? Your track record for surviving bad unbearable days, your track record is 100%. See, once you understand that, you can get on with living. A lot of people, y'all be tripping yourself out. Figure it out. Make something happen for yourself. Facebook wasn't the first thing I built. I also built chat systems and games, study tools and music players, and I'm not alone. J.K. Rowling got rejected 12 times before she finally wrote and published Harry Potter. Even Beyonce had to make hundreds of songs to get Halo. The greatest successes come from having the freedom to fail. The world 
might say you are not allowed to yet. I waited a long time out in the world before I gave myself permission to fail. Please, don't even bother asking. Don't bother telling the world you are ready. Show it. Do it. Ever tried. Ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. I used to worry about a lot of stuff in my life. Worry about what people think. Worry about making people happy. Worrying about X, Y, and Z. Now I don't. I worry about being happy now and being happy today and tomorrow. And I don't look past that. Because I know that I am not guaranteed to wake up in the morning. So I'm just going to be happy for now. And that's how I live. One day at a time, if I go to bed sad tonight, I think to myself, you know what? Tomorrow's going to be a brand new day. I'm going to wake up happy. And I'm going to be positive and I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to worry about anything because nothing's going to worry about me. Happiness is the key because there's so many people that you see either in this industry or just in life in general that are going through their days and may have everything they could ever want, but they're not happy. You know, so you have to focus on what makes you happy and make decisions um, in your career, in your life that make you happy. And so I've been trying to do that and it's working, you know, and, and saying no to things that are negative and saying no to things that don't, you don't want to do, you know. So um, I think that that's my biggest piece of advice. Fear is my friend. Uh -huh. I love fear. Fear, fear. fear allows me to reach my highest potential. Mm -hmm. Fear of failing. It's an illusion. Yeah. Fear is an illusion, but we have to have desire. We have to have something that pushes us. Fear pushes us. Uh -huh. When you don't, when that, when you don't have that feeling no more, it's over. Mm -hmm. When you don't get that fear no more, it's over. Yeah. The time is now to express, and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Do I work hard because I'm in this position? No, I got in this position because I work hard. 30 years putting in the work, working harder than everybody else, getting up earlier than everybody else and putting in the work. Have there been bumps in the road? Absolutely. Thank God my faith and my work ethic keep me growing and getting stronger. Everybody I challenge you, get up earlier, work harder, we'll get the results, all right? You wanna go places, put in the work. It ain't gonna happen on its own. We're all writing a book. What's your book look like? Like, your, your life is a book. You got a bunch of chapters in your book, but when they close that book, how good was the book? How good was your book? What was the ending to your book? All of the things that can be associated with you and your existence become a part of the chapters in your book. Anticipate the wall. You're going to hit it. And in those moments, whatever you tell yourself, if you convince yourself that the difficulty you're facing is harder than everybody else's and you buy it, you will stay where you're at. But if you convince yourself that whatever you wall you've hit, other people have overcome it and so can you, you go through that wall, wall as well. I don't know what your future is, but if you are willing to take the harder way the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. I just want to encourage people to stay away from people who tell you to stay in your lane, all right? Let me tell you something. You, you, you've got one life to live. It's your birthright to try as many different things as you want. I get criticized for, you know, trying this, doing a bit of that. I love it. It's, it's, it's what I, I'm here for. If you want to try something different in your life, go for it, all right? If you're, a, if you're a painter and decorator and you want to be a boxer, you try that. If you're an accountant and you want to be a ballet dancer, you go for that. That's your birthright, okay? Do your thing. Don't, don't get um, pigeonholed into a box. Understand? I think of myself as, as the greatest person that I can be. That's it. I'm not going to go out of my, you know, out on a limb and say I'm the greatest this or that. I, I just, I was a kid with a dream. That's it. And and um, you know the people before me set the bar so high, and and I was a little kid that wasn't afraid to dream as big as I could. And that's really it. I, you know, like you said, like we were talking before, I, I was dedicated. I was hardworking, and that put me in the shoes where I am now. 
I think of myself as, as the greatest person that I can be. That's it. I'm not going to go out of my, you know, out, out on a limb and say I'm the greatest this or that. I, I just, I was a kid with a dream. That's it. And and um, you know, the people before me set the bar so high, and and I was a little kid that wasn't afraid to dream as big as I could. And that's really it. I, you know, like you said, like we were talking before, I, I was dedicated. I was hardworking, and. That put me in the shoes where I am now. If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, the elephant is probably one of the biggest. He can't be the fastest because that's a cheater. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. Work like hell and advertise. You get it? Work like hell, go to bed, and early, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off, and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports. Work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know. They say an alligator is so ferocious it'll kill a lion, but I can kill a, I can kill an alligator with my bare hands. Little E.T. How? They say when a, you want to kill an alligator, you kill it right after it eats, because right after it eats, it gets satisfied and it goes to a state like it's almost paralyzed. Some of y'all in this room, were you paralyzed? You had a little success? You've done what nobody else in your family has done, and now you chilling? Come on, you ain't hungry no more? Next hunting, I need you to stay focused. Why? You should still be hungry. Here's the truth. This is the reality, okay? Nobody's going to believe in you until you've already done it. Nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it, all right? The work is going to come before the belief, which means you're going to have to work for a long time by yourself with no applause, with no awards, with nobody telling you good job, no one's going to believe in you in the beginning, nor should they. Be okay with that. You have to have this knowing that, okay, it may not work today, it may not work tomorrow, but this is the right thing and this is what I'm doing and this is what's feeding me. So I'll, that, that would be the best advice that I can, I can give you, that knowing, just, just believe in what you're doing. And if, it's, and if you don't believe in it, then you're not doing it. You, you, you haven't figured out the thing that you do best yet. When you feel it and when you know, no one can tell you. It, you only have to be right once. I get eight hours of sleep, I prioritize it. I am very um, focused on it, and, and, and the, for me, I need eight hours of sleep. I think better, I have more energy, my mood is better, all these things. And think about it, as a senior executive, you get paid to make a small number of high quality decisions. And they should just be as high quality as I can make them. Warren Buffett says he's good if he makes three good decisions a year. Yeah, I have two rules. Oh, okay. Rule number one, always have fun. Rule number two, listen to rule number one. Life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself. You play on yourself, man. The most important conversation I ever had my, with, is, is with myself. And the shit I was telling myself was so tough, it was so wrong, it was so misguided. And it started to be what you say to yourself every single day. So I started flipping this into a whole different, I started being a master of what I was scared of. I was scared of my mind. And I became a, literally a master of that mind. And that's what now, from now on, it sets me apart from most people. If there is something that you feel is good, something you want to do, something that means something to you, try to do it. Because I think you can only do your best work if you're doing what you want to do and if you're doing it the way you think it should be done. So don't let idiots talk you out of something that you think is good.